Transport Minister is this morning standing by her decision to reject a request from Qatar Airways to increase its flights into Australia. Catherine King has been under increasing pressure to answer questions about why she said no to the additional 28 flights per week. Fiery question time saw the opposition on the attack over the government's relationship with the now former Qantas CEO, Alan Joyce. It's a developing situation and across it all is political reporter Steph Boris at Parliament House. Steph, how has Catherine King justified her decision? Lisa, she is still insisting that this is in the national interest, but she won't go into exactly what that is, saying she doesn't want to point to one, two or three factors. Uh, that said, Catherine King, during this press conference this morning, was pushed on one particular incident that did happen in 2020 in Doha, when a number of women, including Australian women, were taken off a Qatar flight in Doha and they underwent really invasive um, medical examinations that they did not consent to. We do know that five of those women wrote to Catherine King earlier this year requesting that she consider what happened in 2020 in making her final decision around whether allowing extra Qatar flights into Australia or not. This letter saying that, you know, the airline had shown no regard for public safety. So in today's press conference, Lisa, Minister King initially said, look, it wasn't the only factor, but it was a factor. But then she changed her language. She then started saying it was the context in her decision making. If we just really drum this down into simple words, Lisa, yes, it was definitely something that was considered in this decision-making process, but it appears to be just one of the elements. Take a listen. I don't think it's helpful for me to point to any one factor. Uh, we make decisions in the national interest all of the time. There is a context there uh, that is there. You know, that's a fact. That is, you know, a context that is there. So, uh, you know, I was not not aware of it. So obviously, uh, you know, it was a context of the decision that I made. Uh, there was what, no one factor uh, that influenced this decision. So, Steph, what about the who knew what and when in terms of Catherine King's colleagues? Well, Minister King today confirmed that, yes, she had consulted with some colleagues before making the decision, but insisted it was her decision in the end to make. But she wouldn't tell us who she consulted with. We also know the timeline in the sense that um, Minister King made the decision on the 10th of July and sometime between then and the 18th, she told the Prime Minister when it then became public. In terms of the lobbying as well, Lisa, that's really been a focus of this too, regarding how much power and influence Qantas had over this decision. We know Qantas was opposed to it. Alan Joyce himself said that they did lobby the government. Catherine King today saying that she never saw the letter that Qantas wrote to the government, saying that her department dealt with a lot of the stakeholders and she maintained that she dealt more with Virgin and Qatar over this decision rather than Qantas. So there will be uh, more answers and questions <laughs> over the coming weeks, especially given there's a Senate inquiry looking into this as now. So still not the end of it just yet.